I'm Stina. And I'm Father Bert. And this is the Living Fullness Podcast. On this episode, we're going to have a chat about the virtue of temperance. If you're new here to the Living Fullness Podcast, we cover all manner of topics from virtues and relationships and cultural shifts and trends. So we're very happy to have you join us and uh, you're most welcome. So the virtue of temperance, this is another one of those cardinal virtues that we've been talking about, which is kind of like a hinge or a a pillar virtue. Um, And we talked about the virtue of justice just a few weeks back, but the other two, so there's four that um, we talk about when it comes to the cardinal virtues and the other two being prudence and fortitude. Mm. So for today, let's have a bit of a chat about temperance. Nice. So temperance is kind of like the mastery of the will to order our desires and instincts to balance attractions towards what's actually good. So it means that temperance actually allows us to freely choose what's good for us and what's good for others without kind of being pulled or kind of having to sway away in any direction, even for like a small moment, even as a temporary moment, being able to stay stable and set in the pursuit of what is good. Sure. Um, it's, it's, in this way, it's the virtue which regulates the concubiscible appetite. Uh, that's big fancy wording. Uh, what, what it means to say is it, it regulates the appetite as it relates to sensual or sensitive pleasures. So pleasures that act upon the human senses. Uh, that's the, the the good that it regulates. And, and, and so the, the, the concubiscible appetite sort of looks like this. Like, dislike, desire, aversion, sorrow, joy. Mm. So to give you a really simple example, right, or two really simple examples. Mm. The first really simple example is uh, Cadbury's fruit and, not, fruit and nut chocolate, right? Uh, it's, it's, I taste it, I like it. <laughs> I like it, right? right? I desire it and it gives me... The joy, it gives yeah, me like yeah. not, not not like you know the heavenly joy of Almighty God, yeah, but it's, it's yeah, just like it's it's like mm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is good, right? Yeah. Uh, and and similarly, uh, I, I I taste Brussels sprouts. Now, actually, I do like Brussels sprouts. But when I was a kid, <laughs> when I was a kid, I didn't like Brussels sprouts, yeah, right? Yeah. And so you know, I I taste the Brussels sprout and be like Ugh, dislike. Dislike, no like, no like. aversion. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. Mm. And sorrow. Oh, I got to shove it down my gullet because yeah. mum's making me. Uh, you know. And, and, and so uh, it's 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 this sort of um, these these are uh, the way that we experience these sort of uh, sense experiences. We like something or we dislike it. It causes us joy or sorrow. We, we're averse to it or we're attracted to it. And and all of these experiences are neither good or bad in and of themselves. They're just sort of emotional responses to mm, external mm. goods, right? And, and what temperance does, though, is it helps us to regulate those responses. So I like the fruit and nut chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it a lot, yeah. right? But I need to be cautious about how much I eat of it, mm. right? Mm. Temperance helps me to go, yeah, it's nice. Mm. You can have some. But, but, you know, in the vein of the cookie monster – it's a sometimes food, yeah. right? You know, it's not the kind of food that you're having as a stable part of your diet, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's temperance helps me to go, I know what's actually good. I know that there's something better than just fruit and nut chocolate all the time. And so I have to, to, to subject that to my will. I have to subject that to my reason and my will and go, no, I, I as much and all as I'd like some right now, I can't have some right yeah, now. I yeah. need to, I, I actually need to have something better than this. Yeah, I need to have so, something else. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What does tend to happen though with the virtue of temperance and conversations around it is that it does tend to get reduced to conversations about food yep. and sexual pleasure. Yep. So we kind of tend to talk about this virtue like this is a virtue that helps us, only helps us to say no to gluttony to say no to drunkenness and maybe no to sexual attraction outside of marriage or something right, like that. It kind right. of gets reduced right. to talking about just those things. And and there is a space to talk about those things. Those almost have like a sub-virtue, if you will, that come from it. So it, when we use the virtue of temperance in the space of, you know, maybe balancing out the foods that we consume, for example, mm. we could talk about that in the terms of sub-virtue of abstinence, mm. maybe refraining from certain things Um, or in the case of like alcoholic drinks, tempering that would be sobriety becomes the virtue that we're 
working towards. When it comes to sexual attraction, being able to appropriately order those using the virtue of temperance is the virtue of charity, uh, uh, virtue of chastity. Yep. The sub virtue that we talk about is a virtue of chastity. So there's a lot more that we can actually speak about when it comes to this virtue of temperance. It's not just, oh, so anytime I say, like the only way that I use the virtue of temperance is to say no to food right. or to say no right. to drinking or to say yep. no to sex outside of marriage. Yep. That's me exercising temperance. Right. There's no other way for me to practice yeah. Yeah. the exercise of temperance. In, in fact, in fact, being able to say no on its own is not a sufficient growth in virtue, right? Because virtue does not simply involve saying no to something. It involves a, a, a yes as well, right? So, so temperance helps us to, to, to understand what I am actually meant to choose in place of this thing. Mm. It's helped me do, you know, it's, it's, it's not just about, because if I'm fostering a virtue, there, there, there can't be a, an absence here. There's got to be actually something good that I'm choosing. Uh, you know, it can't just be that I'm saying no to something. It's actually that I, I understand I'm actively choosing something in its place. I'm actively making a, a different choice. You know, I'm choosing to love my wife. Yeah. Right. I'm not just saying no to this thing. I'm actively choosing to love my wife. Uh, I'm not just choosing to, to say no to the chocolate. I'm, I'm actually actively choosing to love my children and my family by doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm, so, so there's, there's, there's a whole lot more here than just the no yeah. that temperance works with. And, and, and it can also be said that temperance, although it governs the concupiscible appetite, because we're not boxes, <laughs> because you know, we, we, we talk about these things like they're boxed, but we're not boxes. <laughs> you know, and, and, and so whatever helps the, the, the concupiscible appetite will also be helpful in the long run to, to the irascible appetite, you know, where we're talking about the good as it's hard to, as it's hard to attain, where we, we have fortitude and, uh, and sort of those, those, those virtues that deal with um, uh, sort of um, things that are quite difficult. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, so, um, uh, all that said, that was quite tangential and I'm sorry. Uh, so, so all that said, we are made to enjoy the pleasures of the world, mm. but not only to enjoy the pleasures of the world, mm. we're actually made for much more than that. And the virtue of temperance allows us to choose that which is not pleasurable or less pleasurable in the moment for the sake of something even greater. Right? So it helps us to recognise that there is a good that's greater than what is in this present moment. Yeah. Right. And, and so ultimately, the, the greatest good we have to choose is 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 our, our relationship with God. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so, um, virtue is not just about then. It's not just sort of limited to no food, no sex. You know, often that's it's it's one of our friends, uh, Doctor Matthew Tan, likes to take up the. Um, there was an episode of Seinfeld um, where there was a soup Nazi and the soup Nazi was, you know, that they, they every, everyone loved this guy who made soup in this restaurant in New York. And, yeah. and, uh, and, and they would go to this guy, but if they did something to annoy this chef, he would say, right, no soup for you. <laughs> right. And, and so our, our, our friend Matthew Tan has this, this, this saying that temperance is often reduced to no sex for you. Yeah. Right? And, and that's, but in, in fact, that's not what temperance is fundamentally about. It's mm. not about this negation. Mm. It's actually mm. about what am I really saying yes to? Yeah, yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. Um, what is the greater? Right, right, exactly. And, and, and in a previous episode, we spoke about the virtue of purity, right, mm. which is a sub-virtue mm. of temperance. Mm. Uh, and, and seeing a similar issue, it's not just about what we're not meant to do. It's yeah. actually about uh, what we're meant to be choosing here. And so yeah. it's not only a virtue of moderation, balance and self-control, but it's it's also the virtue of knowing how to celebrate. Yeah. It's the virtue of knowing yeah. how to how to celebrate and celebrate well. And can I say that that is actually something that's missing deeply from, from our social fabric? Because in, in, in Australia, at least, how do we tend to celebrate? We get on the source, mm -hmm. right? Which for our American friends means we've, we've, <laughs> we're, we're getting super drunk, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know, that's what we tend to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, 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 uh, um, uh, that's a, a, it's not how, it's not how you meant to celebrate. No, right? no, yeah. Uh, you know, so temperance teaches us how to celebrate, how to enjoy life. Uh, and and because we are meant to enjoy good things, and yeah. that tells us that when we enjoy, or when we not enjoy, but when we um, 
treat pleasure as an end in itself, we actually cease to enjoy pleasure. And yeah. and it's a bit like... We're not um, able to. No, I exactly. Mean, the, exactly. Sheer, the sheer cycle <laughs> yeah. of getting drunk yep. means that there's an end to pleasure. Right, right. The whole aim of getting drunk is that you eventually pass out <laughs> and you cannot enjoy anything right, anymore. Right, exactly. So consume as quickly as possible or as much as possible yep. whilst the pleasure yep. lasts for Absolutely. this moment. Whereas the, what, what temperance will allow us to do is continue to celebrate and elongate that celebration right, right. for days on end. Right, right. Because <laughs> that enjoyment can continue. Whatever exactly. it is that you're celebrating doesn't have to end that That's night right. when you pass out That's right. and with a hangover the following morning. Right, right, right. Exactly. The celebration continues. Exactly, exactly. Too right. Yeah, very much so. I think one of the challenges that we have with one of the sub-virtues as well of temperance, I feel like temperance is just the hardest, the hardest virtue for people to talk about sure. because it's so the stuff that we talk about within temperance is really sensitive and touchy. Like chastity, for example, mm, is really mm. hard to talk about. Purity, really hard to talk about. Uh, and the same goes for the sub virtue of modesty mm. as well. This is another one that's really sensitive for people. And I think part of that is because as a church, we've done a really poor job in trying to do the best, but we've actually done a poor job of teaching oh, yeah, this yeah. virtue and the sub virtues that fall within it. Indubitably. And so, and so is the case for modesty as mm. well. I think with all good intentions that have come from trying to teach modesty, we've actually created a space that makes a lot of people uncomfortable, cringe, brings up a lot of pain points. Um, and part of that is because of this purity culture that we had mm. come through that wave. And there were some good things that came out of purity culture, but there was also some extreme, yep. Yep. <laughs> extreme kind of rule setting right. that came out right. of it. Um, we're a Hesham sack, you know? Yeah. 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 And so now we kind of have this effect of nobody kind of wants to go near the word modesty. No. So we're all a little bit, oh, I don't, I don't want to touch this. No, that's right. It's like the, um, it's not the forbidden fruit, it's the ugly rotting fruit mm. <laughs> that nobody wants to get mm. rid of. Nobody yep. wants to go near, take care of, whatever. Mm. When we've actually just not recognising it's a really good and pure fruit yep. that's meant yep. to be good, we just don't see it yep. that yep. way. And I think that also makes it really hard because what we then do is we turn this virtue into something where we practice how to avoid things. Yeah. So yep. even when it comes to modesty, well, if I just avoid these particular things, if I just avoid this type of clothing or yep. this particular length or whatever it might be, or these particular attires in these particular settings, if I avoid those, yeah. then I'm being modest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, never mind that even the examples I've given there are, are a reduction in itself because that's right. just purely on the physical right, right, as well. Right. Modesty is so much more than the attire that we have. Yeah. Modesty is a, is a way of our hearts, an attitude of our heart that comes out in our speech and our action and like even the way that we think. <laughs> right, right. But it's so much right. more than just what we wear. Absolutely. Well, and it's the virtue that helps us order our choices towards what's order them in, in a way towards what's good so that we don't just pick what's easy in the here and now. We pick what's best for us mm. here and now and tomorrow and the day after. And like you said, the ultimate good being God. Um, we have that in the right way. We're actually leaning towards the right things because we can do that. It actually allows us then to be free. Yeah. It gives us the yeah. freedom. Yeah. Like we say at Virtue Ministry all the time, the freedom to be who we were made to be. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just an exterior show, it's an interior disposition. Yeah. 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 It's yeah, it's both. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Which then means that we are able to live the way that we ought to live that actually gives genuine joy to our to us. That actually is genuinely pleasing to us and not just and not just in the moments that kind of are happy moments. Yep. We can do that even in the moments where there's immense suffering, we can yes. still sit with, we can still sit with choosing what's good for us and still sit with that freedom. Jacques Philippe again, yeah. you know, all of that, we can still sit within that freedom because we don't have those attachments. Right. 
right. temperance allows us yep. to drop the attachments 100%. of this world, including the attachments that our body may be pushing yeah. us towards. Yeah, that's right. And that's why I say we're not boxes, right? Where these these virtues will naturally work together and work in harmony with each other. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very good. Awesome. Well, we hope that you've picked something up there from uh, the, the the virtue of temperance. If you've got any questions that come from that, um, any ideas or questions or concerns or anything like that that you wanted to share with us, uh, you know where we are. And uh, look us up on Facebook and Instagram and all of that or come and speak to us. Uh, speak? Speak. 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 <laughs> come and speak to us personally. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we, we'd love to hear from you. Mm. Mm. So before we end this episode, Padre, a truth, beauty and goodness. Yes. Um, so I've, I've, I think I've used this one a long time ago, um, which is a, a, I think, not sure. Um, but I've recently picked it up again, okay. uh, because I'm, 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 um, You're a fan, a fan and I'm revamping a course that I'll be teaching next year. And, uh, so it's Romano Gardini, the humanity of Christ contributions to a psychology of Jesus. Mm. Now I hear that title and immediately I go, Ooh. Like that, that, that title makes me go, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. <laughs> it just smacks of the worst of the 1970s. Like it's, 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 it's not what I want to hear. Mm. But in fact, it's a brilliant book. It's an absolutely brilliant book. Uh, and, and he really sort of dives a bit deeper and helps us to get to know who Jesus is and the limitations of our being able to psychologize him. Yeah, okay. Uh, and so it's, it's, really, it's really an interesting um, – a very interesting uh, uh, book. I, I think well worthwhile a read. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So cool. What about yourself? For me, I recently had my parents visit for a short period of time, and there were lots of lots of little moments. Um, but one of them, they because obviously jet lag from the yeah, other side of the yeah, world, yeah. they um, went down for a nap on like day two in the middle of the day. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, okay, you guys go have a nap. Hmm, what will I do? I will go do some work. <laughs> yep. And I had a whole stack of ministry work that I could get through. And it was just amazing in that space of, I think it was about two hours, mm. the amount of work that I got done wow, that's in that cool. two hours. Yeah, yeah. And also that included some editing and you'll be able to see some, I think the reels are already out on socials. Yeah, they are. There's like the reels that I did with Tiana Williams mm. and the shorts that came out from that. It was probably the best editing work that I've done yet. Nice, nice. So it was just funny. Good work. I yeah. was so like at the end of that two-hour period, I could hear my mum stirring. I thought, well, I'll go back and yeah. go and hang out with them if they're ready. Um, and I just kind of paused and went, I smashed out a lot of work in that nice, two hours. Nice, And dang, that work was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it just made me appreciate yeah. all the parents out there who work in the – kids nap times and, yeah, yeah sure, sure sure and this sense of like god really does slow time down yeah, for you when you yeah, yeah when you need it right? <laughs> you need yeah. to he gives yeah. you the grace that you need Absolutely. to be able to work in the time that you have yeah. so mm. how are your parents yeah they're well they're well yeah Great. they're well they're yeah. over in sri lanka now yeah right okay <laughs> okay awesome. awesome yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. good good well, thanks so much for joining us for this week's episode. We will catch you again next week. Until then, know our love and praise. God bless. 